morning. She was at yesterday's rally when that gunfire rang out. Uh, Alex, how are you doing this morning? And will you talk about what you're seeing and hearing in that area and community today? I'm doing fine. Thank you so much for asking. And definitely in a bit of shock after all of this unfolded. It is an eerily quiet morning here. Uh, where we are right now, the roads are completely closed off in every direction. But yesterday, this was the road that was backed up for miles to get into Donald Trump's rally. Uh, we are about a mile from the location. And when I passed this area yesterday, there were Trump flags, people standing outside on the streets, excited to see what happened, or what was going to happen. Now this is a crime scene. There was a press conference just after midnight with multiple agencies with the exception of the Secret Service. Uh, they identified after that press conference, as you mentioned, 23-year-old Thomas Matthew Crooks of Bethel Park. That is about an hour from this location. It's right outside of Pittsburgh. Um, and now we know uh, that he did, as you said, did not have any identification on him. But things are going to change with the investigation because there are multiple agencies. Listen to what the Pennsylvania State Police had to say. And it became apparent that shots were being fired um, in that direction. It was a chaotic scene. Uh, law enforcement, I believe, acted heroically, quickly identifying and, uh, and, and neutralizing the threat, as well as responding to assist the various victims. Uh, as you can imagine, uh, you know, because of the variety of crimes that have been committed, some are under federal jurisdiction, some are under state jurisdiction. And so, uh, you know, we're working through all of that. Not an issue at all. We work seamlessly. The FBI will now take on the investigation of the assassination attempt of the former president. And the state police will look into the homicide and the other victims. Uh, they are still in the hospital as far as we know. Alex, kind of startling to see crime scene tape behind you there at a rally site. I think one of the biggest questions people have this morning is how. How could this happen at a place where security is supposed to be tight. You were there yesterday. You've covered a lot of these rallies. Mm -hmm. uh, give people a sense of the security presence from, from the Secret Service, I guess, to local law enforcement. Del, I have covered now three election cycles of Donald Trump rallies. This was one of the biggest ones I had ever been to. There were traffic backups for miles. Once we even got onto the premises, it took us an hour and a half just to be able to park. There were lines of security. Everybody had to go through magnetometers. Everybody had every single bag searched. So the issue doesn't seem to be within the perimeter. There were tens, uh, there were uh, thousands of people there jammed together. My concern actually throughout the day yesterday was the heat. There were multiple people who had to be taken away by medics. Uh, and one other thing that I remarked over the course of the afternoon as we were waiting for the former president was that this was such an open area. If you were standing on the risers, that uh, apparent building where the shooter was was not immediately visible. You could see the snipers on the nearby buildings, but it wasn't uh, something that was really in my point of view throughout the entire day. Obviously, this all unfolded incredibly quickly. Within seconds, we jumped off the risers that we were on, hit, hiding under them. People's face just, faces just completely panicked. Um, but it was interesting and very lucky that everybody exited incredibly quietly and easily. This could have Thank been God. much more dangerous, not just because of the shots, but also because of the sheer amount of people who were there who could have been running. Um, but the Secret Service immediately opened the gates where people were kind of penned in, particularly in that front area around the former president, and people slowly started to leave. But there definitely was a bit of confusion after the former president was taken out uh, of the area off the stage. A lot of people kind of stood around for a while wondering what was going to happen next. It wasn't until the Secret Service really ushered everybody out, coming up to us immediately asking for footage, telling us that this was now a crime scene. Uh, but there was a good amount of time, about 10 minutes or so, that we were able to stay in the area before they moved us out. Just a, a scary situation, and, and as you said, it was a good thing at least that the majority of the people were able to file right. out safely and, and orderly. National political correspondent Alex Miller, we appreciate it. Yo, what's going on, guys? Young Lee Jr. So, um, you know, just a follow-up to President Joe Biden. Um, he actually had today, I know, might be a little off on the timing, but he uh, addressed, addressed this situation at Oval Office. And, um, but this is from um, earlier this morning. 
It said, President Joe Biden, former Donald Trump, yet yeah, they calling for unity, right? After this assassination, I was talking to my grandmother about this, like, very divided on a lot of issues, a lot of things, man. And um, the thing is, though, we cannot allow evil to win. You know, that's according to Trump, man. You know, his adrenaline was pumping and, you know, him saying those three words, fight, 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 after, you know, he was uh, shot in the ear, he got grazed. But um, that, that raised a lot of volumes, you know, I mean, the, the Satan, he wants us to be in the spirit of fear, you know, at the end of the day. So um, pray for the country. I pray for the government officials, those who are overseeing people in the Pentagon, um, uh, the residents, essential workers, uh, the whole world in general, but especially on uh, the United States right now, because that's our reality, those who live here. And um, it's it's I'm just thank thankful that he's still living. You know, um, you don't want anything to happen to anyone. I mean, that's just like a genuine person, especially uh, as a Christian. And that's we uh, that's like to kind of learn more about like forgiving your enemies. Um, it, it's a reason for that, you know, because you go down deep and into grudges and things of that nature. It hinders your blessings. Right. And it's like put a blindfold on that. And it's like a conglomerate of sins, you know, that Satan can use. It's like a little stronghold that he can use. Uh, to hinder your purpose, right? Because you still want to continue to do things off your own end and seek vengeance. But at the end of the day, um, I believe I did my due diligence and, you know, making a video about the the, uh, the victims as well because they had lives as well and people there. But good thing is, and I'm glad that a lot of people was able to exit out safely, you know, according to the reporter. Um, so, but yeah, man, and they was able to take out the shooter. But that's pretty much it until I get like more videos out here. Uh, that's what I want to say. But continue to like, comment, subscribe, share this video. It's your boy Only Jr. I appreciate you guys, man. I'm out. Deuces.